so hello and welcome to this video so um, in this video we are going to discuss some areas or branches in mathematics and then after that we will take an overview of all those branches then this video is also intended to help KNUST final year mathematics students to know how to go about choosing areas that they want to study their mathematics in and also their courses in those areas their credit hours and what is expected of them okay so i'm bringing off and i'm going to um take you through this so you know mathematics is a science of the study of quality structure space and change it is the craft of creating new knowledge from old, using deductive logic and abstraction. So there are many areas or branches in mathematics which one can pursue. And some of them are listed in the next slide. Right? So branches of mathematics. The tradition division of mathematics is into pure math, which is mathematics studied for its intrinsic interest and we have the applied mathematics which is a mathematics that can be directly applied to real world problems so there are further areas in applied mathematics such as mathematical physics mathematical economics and what have you but in this video we are going to talk about these four areas pure mathematics applied mathematics mathematical physics and mathematical statistics or economics right so mathematical statistics and mathematical economics we fuse the two together so um pure mathematics you know when you talk about pure mathematics um it, it deals with the study of analysis topology algebra and what have you okay so um, it, it deals with the study of these areas and it forms the foundation of the mathematics that we have so areas or topics in pure mathematics include number theory algebra so algebra you can talk of linear algebra abstract algebra then we have geometry analysis like real analysis complex analysis topology so if you love these areas algebra analysis topology number theory geometry then you should be thinking of going into that direction that is pure mathematics okay so when we talk about the number theory right number theory is a study of numbers and the properties of operations between them so we study the numbers and the operation between them like addition subtraction and the rest so it is traditionally concerned with the properties of integers but recently we have added wider classes of problems to it and when you talk about algebra you know algebra deals with the study of the structure of numbers and the arithmetical operations so advanced areas lead to the study of linear algebra abstract algebra etc then we have geometry you know geometry deals with spatial relationships using qualities or axioms and such axioms can be used in conjunction with mathematical definitions for points, straight lines, curves, surfaces, and solids to draw logical conclusions. Then, topology reduces with the properties of a figure that do not change when the figure is continuously deformed. So, the main areas are point set topology, algebraic topology, and the topology of manifolds. Then, we have analysis which is a branch that focuses on derivatives integrals etc okay so when you talk about pure mathematics this is something brief that you can know about pure mathematics so now let's move on to the applied mathematics so applied mathematics is the application of mathematical methods by different fields such as physics engineering medicine biology finance business computer science and industry so in simple terms applied mathematics is just the application of mathematics 
to solve real world problems. So it describes a professional specialty in which mathematicians work on practical problems by formulating and studying mathematical models. So some courses or fields in this area include include optimization, mathematical biology, scientific computing, stochastic and financial modeling, and others. So when you talk about optimization, you know optimization is um, optimization means to make best. Okay, so mathematical optimization or mathematical programming is a selection of a best element with regard to some criterion from some set of available alternatives. Then we talk about mathematical biology. Mathematical biology is also known as biomathematics, or some people do call it theoretical biology, and it's a branch of biology that uses mathematical models and analysis and representations of living organisms to examine the systems that govern structure, development and behavior of and within biological systems. And scientific computing, also called computational science or scientific computation, is mainly the idea of development of mathematical models, use of quantitative analysis techniques and use of computers for solving scientific problems. So it is simply the collection of tools, techniques and theories required to solve on a computer the mathematical models of problems in science and engineering. Then stochastic and financial modeling is a study of financial models that is used to help make investments and other financially related decisions. Okay, so the courses in applied mathematics. This is what they are about, okay? All right, so now when you go to mathematical physics, mathematical physics refers to the development of mathematical methods for application to problems in physics. So we try to use our mathematics to solve problems in physics. So courses or areas in this field include tensor calculus, quantum mechanics, cosmology, and special relativity. So when you take tensor calculus, for instance, it's also known as Ricci calculus or Rikai calculus, and it's an extension of vector calculus to tensor fields. That is tensors that may vary over a manifold, example in space time. So Albert Einstein used it to develop his general theory of relativity. Then when you talk about quantum mechanics, is the science dealing with the behavior of matter and light on the atomic and subatomic scale. So it attempts to describe and account for the properties of molecules and atoms and their constituents. Cosmology is a branch of astronomy concerned with the study of the chronology of the universe. And spatial relativity is a scientific theory regarding the relationship between space and time. And it was developed by Albert Einstein with the help of tensor calculus. All right, so that's with mathematical physics. So the courses and a little introduction about what they do. So we go to mathematical economics or mathematical statistics. So mathematical economics is the application of mathematical methods to represent theories and analyze problems in economics. And mathematical statistics is the application of probability theory, a branch of mathematics to statistics, as opposed to techniques for collecting statistical data. Okay, so when we talk about mathematical statistics, we are just trying to apply mathematics in what statistics, right? And it is mostly based on the probability theory. Okay. So courses or areas in this field include time series analysis and forecasting, optimization, mathematical economics, principles of management, entrepreneurship, design of experiments, and what have you. So you can read about these courses or fields to know what they are about. If not for anything, we've already spoken about optimization and mathematical economics. So you can read on 
time series analysis and forecasting, principles of management, entrepreneurship and design of experiments. Okay. So now let's go to um final year KNST math student. So if you're a math student in your final year at KNUST, when you get to final year, you'll be required to do courses based on elective and core. <laughs> Just like what we used to do in SHS. So we have core courses which will be done by all the students and we have electives and those will be based on the field or area you choose. Whether you want to do applied math, you want to do mathematical physics, you want to do mathematical economics or you want to do pure math. Okay. So we have core courses which are done by all of the students. So during the first semester, we have two of them. We have row functions one, which is a four credit hour course, and we have integral equations, which is a three credit hour course. So during the first semester, these two courses will be done by all, whether you choose to do mathematical physics, econs, pure math, or applied math. And in the second semester, too, these are the core courses. We have row functions one. In row functions two, yeah, you do row functions one here, you do row functions two here, which is a four credit hour course, and introduction to functional analysis, which is also a four credit hour course. So these are the courses or the core courses that you do during the second semester. Okay. So now let's go to the elective courses. So you know we have four areas: applied mathematics pure mathematics, mathematical physics, mathematical economics or statistics. So out of these four areas, you'll be required to choose one of them that you want to specialize in. So I've already introduced you to mathematical accounts, what's about mathematical physics, what it's about, pure mathematics, what it entails, and applied math. So by now, you should be knowing where you want to go into, okay? You can also read more on the internet to know where your interest is or what supports your career aspirations or goals. So when you decide to do applied mathematics, right? these are the elective courses, not core courses. So for the first semester, there are four courses. Each of them is three credit hours. So we have optimization one, mathematical biology one, Stochastic and financial modeling one, scientific computing one. We have learned something to about all these areas, okay? So out of these four elective courses, during the first semester of the applied math course, you are required to choose at least three. So you can choose three or choose all the four, okay? So you are required to choose any three of them or choose all the four if you want to. Then, when you get to the second semester, we have optimization two, mathematical and biology two, stochastic and financial modeling two, and scientific computing two. So, they are all three credit hour courses too. But because in your second semester, you'll be doing projects, right? Which I should have added it to the second semester courses. So, you'll be doing your projects, right? Which is a four credit hour course during the second semester. So, during the second semester, out of the four courses here, you are required to choose two or three, to a minimum two, maximum three. Okay, that's for the second semester. Then, when you are doing pure mathematics, right? Pure math. So, the first semester, you do these three courses. They are elective courses algebraic topology, number theory one, and geometric, geometry one. Sorry. So, they are all three credit hour courses. So, you do all of them. Then the second semester, we have Geometry 2, Number Theory 2, and Galenius Theory. So this one, so they are all three credit hour courses. And you do two or three of them. So you can choose to do just two of them, or you can choose to do all the three of them because of projects. Then if you choose Mathematical Physics, so for first semester, you do all these three courses, which are all three credit hour courses, which is Special Relativity, Cosmology 1, and tensor calculus one okay then for your second semester these three you decide to choose two or do all the three so we have cosmology two 
tensor calculus 2 and quantum mechanics they are all three credits our courses as well and then for those who will be doing mathematical economics or statistics right so you also have four courses the optimization one mathematical economics one time series analysis and forecasting and principles of management so you can choose to do all the four or choose three day then for the second semester we have these four courses optimization two mathematical economics two design of experiments and entrepreneurship so they are all three credits hour courses with the exception of design of experiment which is four credits hour course so here so you can choose to do two or do three here okay so this was something brief to help you know what is ahead of you in your final year and for you to start thinking about the area you want to be in the courses you want to do and the rest and you should do this based on your interest and the field which is going to support your career goals all right so if you want to do some something computing if you want to apply the math generally in operation research in computing in biology then math um, applied math happens to be the best option for you here if you want to learn how to apply the math in physics in solving problems in physics then of course you have to go in for mathematical physics if you really want to dive into the math and really know the foundation of the math based on which the others are built then pure mathematics is the best option for you and if you want to know how to apply your math in economics and statistics then you go in for mathematical economics or statistics so thank you very much and i hope this video is very helpful and is going to help you to make a better decision so see you some other time